it'd be nice to dive into this horseshit. This is Joey Pags, um, the man who is asked most often, um, excuse me, hi, I, oh, sorry, my bad, I thought you were the guy from Bosch. Um, the, uh, uh, this is, he, it's the owner with Hunter Biden's laptop, dated an FBI agent. What? Bounce, chicka, wow, Great to have you along for the ride. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Really glad to have Yeah, I only stopped by. I'm not staying. This guy back, we had him just. I basically just came in to have a piss, really, Joey. It's on a week ago, but I said I had to bring him back. God damn, that's loud. Sorry. Shit. Because we barely scratched the surface. It's John Paul. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You, you didn't scratch any surface, dummy. You repeated the same shit he always says. Paul Mac Isaac, he is the guy who had the repair shop in uh, in Delaware that Hunter Biden dropped his laptop. Uh, his laptop? Uh, Sergey laptop? Um, uh, allegedly. His laptop off at. And allegedly. Considering, for the record, this guy could not pick Hunter Biden out of a lap, uh, out of a lineup. I keep saying laptop when I mean and, um, and eventually never came back to reclaim it. It became the shop's laptop. And when he started to look through his new laptop that he has because the guy didn't pick it up, he realized it's his brand new. It's his brand new laptop. And also, Joey Pags, you're skipping something, which is the same fucking night. The guy, whoever it was, dropped it off. He started looking through shit. He didn't wait nine, 90 days, you dumbass. There's some really, really uh, insidious stuff on here, stuff that probably can affect national security. The book that he has is called American Injustice, My Battle to Expose the Truth. It's John Paul Mac Isaac. Uh, John Paul, good to see you again. Thanks. Hey, thanks for having me on the show again. So last time I just I, I mm -hmm. encapsulated where we were. You got it. Yeah, you got you got us all caught up. I mean, you you jumbled the timeline, but it doesn't matter because it's bullshit anyway. At, at the shop, it was Hunter Biden. You actually talked. No, it was not. Back and forth with Hunter Biden that you needed an external hard drive or something to get some information. <laughs> Dude, he the, when he was on last time, just to remind everybody that he was like, he didn't recognize who it was. And he's like, uh, Biden, who, whatever. And the guy went, Hunter. And he was drunk and he smelled like liquor. And, it, you know, he didn't recognize him at all. Still doesn't. Information off of it, uh, so on and so forth. Or for the other laptop that he brought in that he wanted the stuff off of. E either way, this was him. This was his laptop. You had communication with him since then. Never picked it up. By store policy, you end up keeping it. Um, and then when you... Yeah, and then your store is shut down because people are like, wait a minute. If this guy doesn't call me and tell me my shit is done, or I think he's thrown it away, he might just keep it. You found out what was on it, and you saw what was going... By the way... How many people want to believe that, and this is my first time introducing this nice little nugget. What do you think the odds are that uh, McIsaac says, if I can uh, get anything off of it, I'll try and preserve it. And I'll call you if I'm able to get anything off of it. If not, I'll just recycle it. And he never called. Even though he was able to get the data off, never called him to tell him it's ready. That was the. What do, what do you think the chances are that he actually said that to whoever the fuck it was? Because it wasn't Hunter Biden. Going on in the country, you knew that the, this was something that had to go to the authorities. You, you gave it to your dad, a guy. You know, because he's an authority. Who, Air Force, right? 30 years? Mm hmm. Yep. Uh, you gave it to your dad. He tried to give it to the FBI, and they all but like interrogated him and said, we don't want it. And that's basically what it was. And then you thought to yourself, wait, there's something. Because they were like, we think you stole this. And as a matter of fact, it versions of this keep showing up in multiple places. Fishy going on if the intelligence people don't want it. And you made a dead man switch. I want to take it from there. Um, we're basically. You made a dead man switch. He most certainly did not. Basically, you feared for your life because you knew of, of the, the stuff that was involved here. Joe Biden was involved. The election was going on. Um, the FBI doesn't want it. And you started to fear for your life. And the dead man switch was what? That's why he kept a copy of it and made and let people know he had a copy. If, if you'd given it all to the FBI for real and not kept a copy for yourself, why would you have to fear for your fucking life? But you gave it to a friend of yours to do something in case something happened to you. Yeah, uh, in, in the book, I explained that my friend Kristen was... Uh, she was completely safe and uh, was not connected to this. And 
And, and uh, I'm, I'm, of course, outing her now because she has a copy of it. She's had it for a while. So if, don't pull my fucking fingernails out. You'd have to do her first. Basically, kind of in the same boat I was, kind of an introvert and kept to ourselves. And, and Jesus Christ. Paranoid, annoying. And uh, I, I knew she would be supportive of me. We have been friends for quite a while. Bow, chicka, wow, wow. Uh, so I approached her and said, hey, can you hold on to this? Keep an eye on me. If something should happen to me, I need you to hand deliver this manila envelope. And inside that envelope was a copy of the drive and a letter to Rudy Giuliani. A letter to Rudy Giuliani? Basically saying, look, you know, if, if you get this, if you, if I disappear, come find me. Here, right. Here's Don't worry, John Paul McIsaac. I will find you no matter what occurs. Um, do I do I need to put first class postage on this or should I just I should hand deliver it? You're right. I'll take it. I'll drive it in myself because what's happened. So let me understand this correctly. You and I are friends. We don't really not a lot of people keep track of who we are, where we are. Uh, we don't have a lot of friends in the world. We don't contact our parents very often, except I talk to your dad as about as much as you do. And apparently people want to kill you because you have possession of this. And so you thought as a friend, the best thing you could do was bring me a copy of the thing that you think people want to murder you to get their hands on. And then you, and you want me to take this to Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. So basically this is like the like, just endanger your friend's life night. Fuck here's a copy me. of the drive. Here's an envelope. Uh, here's a here's a target you could just wear around your neck. I think people want to kill me because I have this. Here, you hold on to it. Motherfucker. <laughs> what an asshole. Here's a letter. Here's pertinent information coming. Here's everything that could get you killed, too. <laughs> what? Yes, I know, Joey Pags. We're all looking at him like that. Like, wait a minute. Why are you trying to get your friend killed, you fucking moron? Come and get me if I've been thrown in a hole. Why was... Why, why her? What? Yeah. Why was Rudy the guy, John Paul? Was it because he was a lawyer? It wasn't. Rudy wasn't the guy. Rudy was the guy that gets the envelope. She's the one who has to come get him out of the fucking hole. Catherine Martin! FBI! You're safe! Get me out of here, you fucking bitch! Who are you? I'm John Paul McIsaac! <laughs> what? For Trump, was it because he was a former prosecutor? He's America's mayor? Why was he the guy? I just like the cut of his jib. Saw him at uh, Four Seasons uh, Total Jerk Off and thought, he's the man. Well, I mean, the FBI said lawyer up. Uh, I couldn't think of any other lawyer that was more... Uh, in tune with what the Bidens were up to in Ukraine. I believe during that summer in 2019, he was actually boots on the ground in Ukraine. He was. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Isn't that, isn't that curious? Yeah. He was also the year before as well. Is that something you really want to bring attention to? Uh, what the uh, former vice president was up to at the time. So I think... Uh, which, by the way, for the record is uh, nothing. He was the right person to go to. Plus, he was an attorney for the president of the United States. Uh, I had little idea that 10 months later, I would, uh, after trying to give it to the FBI, eventually succeeding to give it to the FBI, having them do nothing with it. And then on my attempts to get it to members of Congress and they didn't listen, eventually that copy of the drive would be the copy that would uh, I would overnight to Bob Costello, who was Rudy Giuliani's lawyer. Well, it's interesting. And, and again, Whoa, that, hold on. So the timeline on this is all fucked up now. So he didn't have that, that copy was the only copy that he had, but he, he still has multiple copies of that copy. Did he just go get it back from her and then mail that one and then, or drop it off or give it again? Like they didn't listen. Eventually that copy of the drive would be the copy that would, uh, I would overnight to Bob Costello, who was Rudy Giuliani's lawyer. Well, it's interesting. And, and again, it's John Paul Mac Isaac. Go get his book. It's called American Injustice. My Oh, my God. Just fucking what a lame. Oh, God. To expose the truth. What's interesting about that is that when the FBI. Is that it isn't. Raided uh, Rudy's either home or office. Um, the, he said, <laughs> here's the drive. 
And guess what? No. He's, he had four copies of the drive, dummy. They told him they didn't want it then either. Right. Because they were there to get communication devices, not storage devices. The, the, what he was in trouble for were communications he made, not where those communications were stored. They don't need to take your hard drives. They take anything with a Wi-Fi router in it or a modem or, uh, or that you use as a, you know, a cellular device. They just did not want to put hands on this drive. Uh, what, do you think it was because that, that would give them plausible deniability or if they actually had hands on, they had to investigate it? No, because they didn't have a warrant to take storage devices. But why do you think they kept on saying... And you can't give things to the FBI that are evidence of other people's crimes and not have it fuck up the chain of custody. No to your dad, to you, to Rudy, to everybody. The FBI did not want it. You know, I, I'm convinced still to this day, and I think with the whistleblowers that we've seen come out... You have seen no whistleblowers come out. As a matter of fact... They are all still hiding their identity if they exist at all. That the whole FBI isn't corrupt. There are some individuals. Unfortunately, the people that were on the lookout, the people that were actively protecting the vibe. Unfortunately, the only people I ever ran into who had weird Russian accents. They intercepted uh, my efforts to get this laptop to the authorities. Wow. And, and they are probably the ones involved with uh, searching Rudy's house. And they're probably the ones... No, they aren't. These are different offices entirely, fuckhead. ...was involved with uh, Mar-a-Lago, so... You know. No, they aren't. That's not how it works. No, it's, it's probably the same people again. The FBI carries out these searches, but they are not the instigators of these searches. Shit. I still have faith in the agency. I just don't trust them. I'm going to, if I had a frying pan, I would just hit myself in the fucking face right now with it. Say that again, dit shit. And they're probably the ones involved with uh, Mar-a-Lago. So, you know, it's, it's probably the same people. Again, I still have faith in the agency. I just don't trust them. No, I, I still have faith in the agency. I just don't trust them. Get it, because the hierarchy is really what the problem is. Those running the DOJ, that's the problem. You're right. There are FBI whistleblowers coming out all the time. I had one on a couple of days ago and these yeah what was his name people are serious about stopping crime stopping you know uh, child pornography stopping sex trafficking and they're being told to focus on january 6th or they're being told to to scare you so that doesn't make any they're being told to scare you hold on stop in the name of bullshit rumble uh let's see uh, Jewish guy, locals, uh, Joe Pags. Let me see this one second. Um, gotta put this in here. Joe Pags whistleblower. That should do it, right? Uh, blind eye to crime. This is it. Okay, ten, December 14th. Here he is. This is the guy that he says is an FBI whistleblower. He's an FBI whistleblower because he says the agency lost its way. Well, let's hear it. Great to have you along for the ride. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Really glad to have you. Oh, you're always asking me to stick around. This guy on, he's a, uh, Steve, are you, uh, strictly speaking, still an FBI agent or are you no longer with the FBI? Did they suspend you or are you out? I'm indefinitely suspended, so I'm technically an unpaid bureau employee. Okay, so you're still employed, but they're not paying you, so you're suspended without pay. <laughs> yeah, all right. For... Correct. His, for what? His name is Steve Friend. He is an FBI whistleblower. And uh, the way this whole thing shook out, Steve, is, is crazy to me. Because uh, from what I've read about you, from what I've talked to my friends who have interviewed you and talked with you, um, you're a really good guy. You love America. You want to do right from wrong. You want to make sure that bad guys and bad gals are out of society. And that's sort of why you joined the FBI, isn't it? 
Yeah, absolutely. It was my dream job. I mean, I was a police officer before, uh, 12 years total law enforcement experience, but been with the Bureau for eight years. Uh, and up until uh, I was moved over to work domestic terrorism, I'd been entirely focused on violent crime and, and uh, child pornography investigations. So really going after some of the worst of the worst. In the eight years that you were in, and again, you're still employed by the FBI, but you're not getting paid and you're indefinitely suspended. Uh, and I'll get into exactly the reasons why they, they did that to you. But uh, in getting into the FBI, had you ever in the eight years had any issues uh, with your task management, responsibilities? Is there some file folder somewhere that says Thief Friend is a bad guy and did the job badly or not? Oh, no, not at all. I've had exemplary performance reviews my entire career. Until? I actually get... I, I, he's had an exemplary performance in his entire storied career of low six years. Um, and... Um, it, the, the important thing, though, is that he's uh, he's finally, after all of his years with the Bureau, speaking out, and then they silenced him. I got an award about a month before I made my uh, whistleblower disclosure, and this whole thing started. So it was a precipitous fall from grace. So, you oh, he was he was a gra he was graced. He was under the grace. Of the You're FBI. in uh, in a division that is going after child predators, specifically child pornography, specifically, or that was a part of the overview of what you what you were responsible for. Well, I transferred uh, over the summer of 2021. I'd been working on Indian reservations for about seven years, okay. and then uh, took the transfer to work uh, child pornography investigations, human trafficking investigations. Uh, did that for a few months, and then when the new fiscal year rolled over, uh, my division reassigned me to work domestic terrorism matters. But as I came to find out, that was almost entirely focused on January 6th investigations. And I want to get into that. Well, yeah, because that had just happened, dummy. That full throat in a second. It's Steve Friend. Steve, people can follow you on Twitter at Real Steve Friend altogether. And I just followed you a minute ago on Truth Social, Real underscore Steve Friend. Go and follow him there. There's no website at this point, right? No, no, not right now. Okay, that's cool. Um, so, uh, again, we'll send people to your I have to say he looks like an AI person. And honestly, it, it looks like somebody who's like on the run and they just stripped his beard off. Social. I just want to focus on what you were working on before this whole switch happened. Um, child, uh, child uh, sex predators, child pornography, human trafficking, sex trafficking. These are big, big problems in this country with the poorest border even bigger than before. Um, do people, you think, understand, understand the scope of how bad this is, what's happening in our country? Okay, so... Are we running into a situation where he wanted to be assigned to a certain thing and then he got put on another assignment and he just didn't like that they didn't put him on the looking for kids team for some reason? Absolutely not. I mean, I've said multiple times that, and I tend to be, you know, on the small government side of things, politically oriented myself. Uh, but you could yeah, double right. the size of the FBI, assign it entirely to child pornography investigations, and that that threat would not be fully assigned. So it's it's rampant. It's a major problem, and it really broke my my heart when I had to hear that that was going to be considered a local matter um, by the, my management and they, when they reassigned me. Well, how exactly would it be a local uh, a local matter? The FBI gets involved if it goes across state lines. I'd imagine coming across the southern border would be a big deal. Going from one state to another, when sex trafficking and human trafficking happens uh, all across the country, it's not. Okay, get to the point where he was somehow told to threaten John Paul McIsaac. It's not in one area. It's not like you're in Arkansas and you go from town to town. I mean, this is a major national issue. Why would they decide that the locals should handle it? No. Okay, first of all. Um, the child porn is a federal crime and nobody receives it but across state lines. Or if they if they have it, the idea is to transmit it across state lines. You don't it's a federal crime anyways. You don't have to cross a state line. You're not safe from the FBI's investigation if you only sell local child porn. Well, I think it was just a matter of prioritizing what, what their needs were uh, to meet their budgetary, you know, uh, pre, pre, predetermined numbers. And they thought that there was going to be a lot more uh, gold in them hills of the domestic terrorism side. And they wanted to throw bodies at it. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Now, let's get into domestic terrorism. As an FBI agent, what do you think the definition is of that? A domestic terrorist? I mean, it's it's basically just going to be a threat to the homeland by somebody who's got a, you know, a radical ideology uh, it's something that, you know, you, it's one of those, you know it when you see it type of things, I think. All right. It, none of, this dude is just a disgruntled dude who got put on leave. This is not whistleblowing. That's not, that's not a whistleblower. That's somebody who was assigned to one area, 
got mad because po- politically he wanted to be on that for some fucking reason. And when they put him in charge of, uh, on another thing, he was like, the priorities here are all fucked up. Yeah, that's not your business. You're an agent. You're not a, you're not a, a special agent. You're not in charge of the FBI. Fuck you. He's not a whistleblower. That's guy, that guy is not a whistleblower. He's a he's a whiny ex-employee. Makes sense to me. For those who didn't see us last week, uh, the FBI, uh, your dad tried to give it to them, what, September of 19? It was October 9th, 2019. They ended up taking it in December. Uh, I guess under pressure, they took it. And- uh, what do you mean, you guess under pressure? From whom? And they sat on it. Uh, it, there was, uh, it looked as though, from the information coming out, there was an entire section of the FBI that was in charge of not doing anything with this laptop. <laughs> yes. No, don't worry. You can prove a negative. And then uh, I'm guessing you start hearing that 51 either former or current intelligence agents say this is Russian disinformation. What goes through your mind then? Um, it is. Well, I had some suspicions that there were other agencies besides the FBI that were running interference for the Biden right. campaign. Uh, well, of course. I mean, yeah. Homeland Security, IRS, Education Department. Um, there, there was a, a Joseph Kofor Black, who uh, Hunter got on the board of directors uh, for Burisma. Right. So it's kind of if, if being on the board of directors for Burisma is a reward for doing something for these rich oligarchs, it begs the question, what did he do? And he was the uh, deputy chief of uh, the CIA under uh, Clinton and then uh, counterterrorism under Bush. And right. then he went on to Blackwater. So this, is, this guy is like born and bred intelligence uh, community hierarchy. I right. mean, this guy's been in the industry a long time. Are you fucking kidding me? Trump hired J- Paul Manafort to run his campaign for free. The motherfucker suggested snipers on the Euromaidan. And that's could be a possible connection there. It's- it, it, I don't want to hear about a possible connection, you paranoid fuck. You have the fucking documents. Holy shit. Right? You have the whole, you have all of this shit. If there's a there there, you should know. It scared me when 51 intelligence experts were willing to take their credibility their, and their integrity and their credentials and throw them completely out the window to la- jump on board this whole Russian disinformation narrative, which we're going to prove false. And hopefully they're. No, you're not. You are not going to prove it false. Doesn't work that way. You haven't done it in two years, three fucking years now. You're not going to do it ever. You're going to be punished accordingly. And, and by your feeling, by your thoughts, and by what I've seen, these people all had to know they were lying. They, they couldn't really believe this was Russian disinformation. Yeah, they could. They still do. And they're not wrong. Oh, absolutely. I, I've always kind of had this picture in my head of a pyramid. and the- Motherfucker, I don't... Nobody cares about the pictures inside your head, dude. Nobody cares. You have the entire laptop. This should be nothing but documentation every time this motherfucker comes on. Look at this piece of paper. 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 If you tie this together, blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's... Why the fuck are we even discussing this dipshit's mental imagery of how the FBI hierarchy works. Those 51 intelligence experts were the foot soldiers. They were the, the, the bottom run of the, this. First of all, the word is rung. Pyramids don't have rungs, but continue. Cabal or deep state. Yes. Fuck you. Oh my God. They're just doing it to me. They just, they just make, they just like, oh, they're trying to make me angry. I almost liked it. Oh, and they right. gladly fell on their swords to, to get, a slot on CNN later on life. Actually, I think a handful of them moonlight on CNN and MSNBC. So they were probably uh, getting uh, ready to do a career change anyway. So it was easy for them to give up their credibility. A lot of them. They didn't. You're an idiot. Them got those jobs you're talking about. American injustice. My battle to expose the truth is John Paul Mac Isaac, uh, the guy who ran the, the Mac shop. He didn't ask for any of this, but that laptop. <laughs> you know who didn't ask for any of this? His fucking girlfriend 
who he almost got killed if any of this bullshit was true. It was dropped literally in his lap, and he ended up... No, it was literally not. As a matter of fact, whether he was there when it was dropped off or not, changed the, he changed that story three fucking times. Keeping it because uh, Hunter Biden never came back to get it. When we, the public, didn't... He never called and told him to come pick it up. And, and whoever dropped it off had every right to believe that it was unsalvageable and he was unable to save any of the files. That's why nobody will bring their fucking repairs to this asshole shop anymore. We know all of this stuff that was going on. We knew very little about what was going on. Uh you still know li very little about what's going on. Jesus Christ. Other than they were claiming it wasn't his. Or they were claiming that it was stolen. They were claiming that, that, that uh, the information is, is just not true. But we mm -hmm. It's a mix. We knew that it was true publicly when you gave word that Hunter's attorneys contacted you asking for it back. When did that happen? Well, October 13th, 29th, uh, 2020, so the night before the New York Post ran the story, I get a phone call in my shop from George Maceres, who was Hunter's lawyer at the time. And he uh -huh. asked me if uh, Hunter had uh, left a laptop with me. And he said he thinks uh, Hunter dropped it off uh, sometime in 2017. So I kind of knew he was off, but I did what the FBI told me to do. The FBI told me to... Uh, if somebody came looking for the laptop, I was to stall them. I was to say that it was in an offsite location. Uh, give me a couple days. If you could get my, um, give me an email, shoot me an email with your credentials so that I know. Bullshit. Know that you're authorized to represent the customer. Uh, send that over and then I'll go search tomorrow. I'll give you a ring. Wow. And, and then what happened? Did they contact you or was it just somebody on the fucking phone that sounded a lot like Rudy Giuliani? I hung up the phone and then instead of texting agent Mike from the FBI like he told me to. I called Bob Costello and said, uh, I'm in trouble. Uh, I think uh, I think Hunter's lawyer knows. Hunter's lawyer was uh, very specific. He said, uh, are you still on the backside of Trolley Square? And that night I did not go home. I was... Uh, he oh my God. Yeah, first of all, Hunter's lawyer didn't fucking call him. <laughs> you fucking lunatic. He let me know that I, he knew. Hunter's lawyer sounds a lot like that your your girlfriend who was like, motherfucker, you scared the shit out of me. I'm going to scare the shit out of you. Where I lived or knew where I worked. So uh, that night I. What are you talking about? <laughs> You're in the yellow pages. I got an Uber and I went to a friend's house and I didn't sleep well that night. Smart. Uh but yeah, great. So you almost got your friend killed too. Jesus Christ. This is like the pelican dork. <laughs> I mean, uh, obviously, this was a scare tactic, but it was also an admission. What do you mean, obviously? No, we have not established that that was really Hunter Biden's lawyer that called at all. Shut the fuck up. That, yes, we know that it's his. Uh, oh, crap, we know it's on it. We need to get this back. And, and that's got to be a scary phone call. It's John Paul Mack, guys, to get this book, American Injustice. Why, again, why would it be a scary phone call? There would be a, a fucking chain of, uh, like, there'd be a list of the fact that the phone call was made. Like, if, if an attorney calls you, the phone call is billable. Do you understand? There's no, like, secret lawyer, I'm gonna fucking kill you, buddy. Like, if, you're, if a lawyer calls you, there's a record of the phone call and when it happened and what was discussed. Because they're gonna bill their fucking client hundreds of dollars more than the cost of the phone call should really be, um, to fucking call, say some shit, and hang up. Get the fuck out of here. Did they ever call back? No. Did they ever send the email or the, the, the piece of paper that says they're the real owner? No. This is my battle to expose the truth. Uh, it is out. Uh, it's out now. It's been out since November, so you can go. And yes, it's amazing. It's flying off the shelves. He's, he's so afraid when he walks by them, he's going to get hit in the head. Grab it and find all the details. I can't skip over this part because I'm kind of that guy. It's <laughs> Yeah, you definitely are that guy. says that you were mistreated by the FBI, and you've told me some of that mistreatment. John Paul, it says that you also dated an FBI agent. What am I, where, where did this come in? Was it uh... this during all this? Was this before this? Was it after this? What is this all about? She's a Canadian FBI agent. We dated Summers when I was in middle school. She was totally hot and really smart and like uh, prettier than anybody you've ever met. So about uh, a couple weeks after I had given my uncle and my father, again, my father's... 
Get the fuck out of here. This dude starts knocking boots with a FBI, a hot FBI agent that's just turned on by his hat bobble. <laughs> Motherfucker. Retired colonel in the Air Force. My uncle, also a retired colonel in the Air Force. Because at this time, and we're talking late winter, so February of 2020, right. I was still desperate and keeping my idea. Well, yes. So, but the warmth of this hot FBI agent was uh, girding my loins. Identity a secret, keeping my business intact. And uh, so I sent my father. Apparently, keeping your business intact has nothing to do with shaping up that 20, uh, that, that sweet 2009 Mac Pro. Father and my uncle to reach out to members of Congress. And after about a week of doing that, um, and probably about a, a week or two before the COVID lockdowns, uh, a young lady walked into my life and uh, came into the shop needing service. Uh, when the and boy did I give it to her! Bounce, chicka, wow, wow, like a wacka, wacka, bounce. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> lockdowns took place. Uh, we were kind of isolated. She was stuck in Pennsylvania. I'm stuck in Delaware. Yeah, and. Uh, So you're in separate states. We got to know each other. Um, mm -hmm. And that's when I found out that she was a, a, a former, F she worked for the FBI. She was an analyst. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, how did she spring that on you? That kind of caught me off guard. <laughs> uh, but I didn't think much of it. And, uh, you know, I, I, unfortunately, I have a soft spot for uh, very strong, creative, strong-willed liberal women. So... Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. You can just hear that? Hear that? That's the sound of erections dying and vaginas drying up all over the country right now. Okay. Um, I obviously kept my activities a complete secret from her. Yeah, but... It, This is so fucking dumb. Oh. Um, and then one day in August, uh, about mid-August, she came over and said uh, she was really excited because she got put on a uh, disinformation board to go over all the oh, no. disinformation regarding Hunter Biden and Burisma and the Biden family. And uh, that's when she pulled out the syringe. Get the fuck out of here. Shut up. <laughs> Ah, uh, I can, I, her name was Ka Karen, special agent Karen, totally American. And I tried desperately to stop my jaw from dropping. Right. And, uh, kind of, she even called me on it, like, if I was okay, because I think I froze like a deer in headlights, because all of a sudden the thought's like, wait a second, could she have been some form of Sent to murder me? Of handler. No, right. Uh, I mean, from the very beginning, now now everything goes back in your, into your memory banks. You're like, this wasn't a coincidence. Mm -hmm. This this was something from the beginning. What she was using me for intel and cock. Did truly, John Paul? Was this truly a coincidence? That it it was enough of a coincidence for me to uh, put a put a pretty big wall up and, and oh, guard guard myself and my feelings. And unfortunately, it didn't take long for the relationship to deteriorate rapidly. <laughs> yeah. About eight minutes. Um, and, you know, I'm... I mean, it was all based on sex anyway, so how long was it going to last? It's unfortunate, but I'll never know. If, what are the uh, chances? I know. So weird, right? M right? Fuck, right? It was very odd, and I thought the timing was definitely off. Um, and who knows? You know, if, if the FBI wanted to keep an eye on me, they kind of they, they knew what I was attracted to. I mean, that... that Ew. 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 No. This is all such bullshit. Fuck me. This is so gross. Oh, thank you, Deanne. On behalf of strong, creative, liberal women everywhere, thank you for, uh, Deanne, for posing as an FBI agent just to give this guy the willies. Motherfucker. Bullshit alert. Hold on. This is, this calls for. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Bullshit level, DEFCON 5. Oh my God. Just idiotic. No.
None of this is true. This is fan. This is sheer fantasy. Shut the fuck up. This gets dumber all the time. That was really. I mean, I can't, I can't believe this. Hopefully, you'll find out yes or no whether it was uh, a setup or or wasn't a setup. That that's wild though. John Paul Mac Isaac is. His- you, you're not you're not gonna boombox secret agent man outsider fucking window. Name the book is called American Injustice: My Battle to Expose the Truth. I saw a snippet from another. <laughs> My battle to expose the truth to a female FBI agent who has different politics than mine. <laughs> <laughs> interview and uh, something was alluded to that you were looking through the laptop and there appeared to be some inf- right away by the way he did not wait 90 days information that led you to believe that somebody needed to die somebody uh, that either hunter biden or yeah that i i in my head i pictured a guillotine on top of an aztec temple um it might have been a scene from heavy metal the cartoon but anyway somebody in that email set or in the in the in the text messages it was about getting rid of or taking care of somebody. What was that all about? Well, so I n- I've never really felt too comfortable about talking about the contents of the laptop. Why? That's the only part of this that matters. If you're not comfortable with the contents of the laptop, then you're not comfortable with the fact that they're real. So, uh, again... This is this was the problem with Rudy Giuliani's bullshit around this, and it's everything that's wrong with this asshole's telling of it, and everybody else is that it should just be document after document after document, and and I don't want to hear your opinions about pyramids and hierarchies and fucking guillotines with anybody other than authorities. Gotcha. Uh, I think, yeah, which does not include you, Joey Pags. It was a, a reaction to, and I still feel this way when people say that, oh well, the Biden family would never hurt you. Hunter would never do anything to you. Right. You're still alive. Proof positive. Um, you, you had no fear. You no legitimate fear for your safety. No, I mean, uh, fear is an, an, an immensely personal uh, feeling. And you can be cowardly and full of shit all by your lonesome. You don't need there to be somebody scary out there. There doesn't have to be anything in the dark for you to be a chicken shit for being scared of the dark. And unfortunately, that's not true. I read an interaction between Hunter and a bouncer at a club. Please go on. Uh, He had been previously thrown out by another bouncer, um, kind of rudely grabbed by the neck and thrown to the curb. And he was talking to the other bouncer, demanding to get his name so he could have him killed. And he was pretty persistent about it. And it kind of put a a shiver down my spine because here's a guy that just grabbed him by the neck. What? I'm sorry. Was this a text exchange? So he was texting someone, hey, what's the name of that bouncer? I want to have him murdered. And that somehow never made it to the the text that Rudy was holding up. Was it? What is it? Was it in a slack neck and threw him to the curb and it obviously embarrassed him and I couldn't imagine what Hunter would do to the guy that is perceived to air out his dirty laundry. Unbelievable. So I, I, was, I was Yes, I agree, Joey, Joey Pags. Completely unbelievable. Fuck off with this nonsense. It was not, uh, it made me very uneasy. Well, I could imagine. And- no, 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 no. John Paul McIsaac, you are by definition, uneasy. No one has to make you uneasy. You are this way, you fucking asshole. And, and it turns out all of your fears and all of your concerns are absolutely true. As we find out more about what- we- No, they are not. First of all, he's alive. Secondly, he's not holding up any of this shit. He's just extemporaneously yammering about it. Go fuck yourself. It's on that hard drive. And I know a lot of it because I'm friends with Rudy and with Bernie Carrick. Um- uh huh. When you find out what's on there, there is what Rudy calls a RICO case against an organized crime family in the Biden family, from his brother to his son to his, his sister. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, there's no evidence of that, but you can talk about it all you want. I mean, right down the line, these are not good people if what we know is on the hard drive is, in fact, fact. And, and, it, and it isn't. It is. That's why the lawyer. No, it isn't. wanted it back. No. You have not established that the, that that was the real lawyer. Why did they never call back? Why didn't they ever send that? And again, billable fucking hours. Get the fuck out of here. Nonsense. So all of this goes on. The New York Post is... None of it goes on. 
Shut up. I'm not taking any of this for granted. You have not earned, neither of these assholes have earned the right to talk about any of this shit like it actually occurred. Gonna, is going to put the story up the next day. When did you find out that that story was squelched, that, that they censored it everywhere, on Facebook, on Twitter? You couldn't put it anywhere. None of the mainstream. It was on the New York Post's website, and you could see it. It, it was totally Streisand effect by it not being shown on Twitter. People could go find it all they want. Media was going to cover it. So that story, they were forcing it to go away. What did you think? No, it was a foreign interference campaign in, in October specifically during the window between, you know, of the election where it would affect the, the, the vote. And it had been held long enough to try and um, release it to dirty up the candidate, but not early enough where you could actually vet it. Well, it was 6.30 in the morning. I had been hitting refresh on the New York Post website. Right. And finally, the article broke. And I think by 9 o'clock, all discussion and conversation on Twitter and on Facebook was either completely silenced or severely repressed. And I was just amazed because I, I know a little... By the way, it, it made it the story. The fact that you couldn't read it ended up making you go to another site. It actually benefited the traffic at the New York Post site. A little bit about technology and how this stuff works, and I know that- Uh-huh, a very little bit. This didn't happen organically. Um, there wasn't a- No, nothing happens organically at a tech company. Meeting that was held to discuss this amongst the different facts checkers. This was something that was coordinated and, and was a switch that got flicked at about nine o'clock in the morning. Is that how you make flick, you flick switches, do you? Is that how it worked with your FBI girlfriend? <laughs> uh, on Monday, or on that Wednesday. So right. uh, it was, for me... So I called my totally hot FBI girlfriend and... Uh, <laughs> picked up the phone, dropped it on the floor. Ah, ah, was all I heard. That's when I realized that this was a hell of a lot bigger than just me. Like, <laughs> what do you mean a hell of a lot? It, it had been a year and a half. You were running from the FBI. You had you broke up with your super hot girlfriend because you thought she was going to slip you a Mickey and bury you in a shallow grave. This was way beyond me and my personal quest for my safety and, and protection. This was a... Yes, this included you almost allegedly getting your friends murdered too by Ubering to their house with illicit... Uh, documents and evidence with you or giving them the the dead man bag and going hey if they kill me uh they're probably coming for you next collaborative by the way there's uh his super hot fbi agent chick put a uh tracking device in his uh in his beanie ball a uh, collusion count on it between our federal agencies and our mainstream and social media to not only block a story but also mm -hmm. prevent the truth from getting out and replacing that story with this whole Russian narrative and I'm a hacker and it's due to Putin. By the way, no one called you a hacker. They said that uh, what you got a hold of were hacked materials. You were a delivery system, dumb fuck. Stop calling yourself a, a hacker or alluding to the fact that you have even the skill necessary to be a hacker. And that, there are no beige hat hackers. That was just, that happened so quickly that could not have been anything other than orchestrated yeah well i mean i could i literally could not direct message you on twitter with the story link that's how deep this went and over the past couple of he didn't need it he'd been refreshing the story since the morning weeks you've been and and by the way let's be clear joe pags was allegedly dming this fuck on the day the hunter biden laptop bullshit myth story came out from the new york post from the paper printout documents that Rudy Giuliani had provided them while refusing to provide them a copy of the actual drive itself, even though he had four of them and they were the exclusive uh, paper that was going to break it because they were a Murdoch company. And at that point, they were still on board with Trump. Allegedly. Vindicated. People like me who have been blacklisted and ghost banned, I've been vindicated. But in the past... No, you haven't. Joe, you're full of shit. You have not been vindicated at all. Stop it. This is nonsense couple of weeks we found out that everything you just said to me is true no we didn't what's her name what's her fucking first name just give her a first name uh, uh, what about fbi agent special agent mike and special agent joshua who was i think played by gary Busey in lethal weapon that they colluded to get rid of the new york post story that they 
No, they didn't. The New- they can't collude to get rid of the New York Post story. It was up the whole time. By the way, Trump Truth Social um, censored the Humpty Dumpty headline from North, uh, from uh, the New York Post as well. Suspended the account of the New York Post. You couldn't DM it. When you see that come out, does it make you feel a little bit better that, that the public now knows? No, they don't now know anything. It's bullshit. This is just a flat-out lie. That everything you've said from day one has been true. Nonsense. Yeah, I can't, I'm vindicated in, a, in some aspects, but... The, some- I'm still afraid for my life. Because when I get really lonely, I'll call up my super hot ex-FBI agent girlfriend who now works for the, the Ministry of Disinformation at the Pentaveret. And um, we'll have phone sex. And her voice is a lot deeper now. Um, Simple fact that the mainstream media continues to not discuss this and, and, and touch on this story. Hold on. I can't. Give me one second. Just uh, like uh, there, there is no story, dipshit. Hold on, here we go. Um, All right, enough of this bullshit. I'm trying to tell you something, young Paul McIsaac. Enough of this shit, you son of a bitch. You you can't tell people these kind of lies. You're putting shame on the McIsaacs and the McLugals and the McLarens and the McFlinnerys and the McDonalds are sick of it. They're not even giving fries with it anymore. You you ought to be... I'm so fucking sick of you. Stop wearing your fucking... Hat on, it's impolite to have it inside. I'm standing out in a field right now. Commando. This is a huge story. This is the largest. It's not a huge story. You're a huge fucking twit. The largest tool the left has to. You're, you're the smallest tool in the shed. Influence their followers. Yes. And it has been taken. Who's over. this? Hold on. Who's the fuck? Who's this uh, Italian fella you're talking to? I don't buy it for a fucking second. Over by a person that respects freedom of speech. Well, freedom of speech isn't it right. You can't make up fucking stories about someone and, and know that it'll take time to vet those fucking stories. So you hold the fucking bullshit until it's too fucking late, you bastard. And the, they should be reporting this and they're not. So it's almost like Hunter. Who cares? They're not a newspaper. Grow the fuck up. We went through this same same shit in 2016. We haven't learned the fucking lesson. Biden repression 2.0. Yeah. They're they're refusing to talk about this story. I don't. What what story? I'm sorry. I just got here and you need to catch me up on this. Now I understand there was this little hot lassie that you were noodle you were bumping uglies with over at the FBI. Is that the fact now? Tell me a story, you bastard. I don't know what the end game is. I mean, it's it seemed like. Last year, last winter, when the Washington Post admitted that the laptop was real, even up... They no, no such fucking thing happened, asshole. They got a hard drive named Laptop. Look, I have a dog named Cat. That doesn't mean that it can fucking fetch. Until recently when CBS did a forensic analysis on a copy from my lawyer that came back that this is 100% real and this is what... That's not what they said at all, you bastard. They didn't say it come back 100% real. The people that you sent it to, that your lawyer sent it to, that they paid as their witness. Those folks came back and said, there's a lot of files on here. I can't imagine someone would make up this kind of shit. Well, that's just because you lack imagination doesn't mean it's the fucking presidency of the United States, you cunt. What the FBI has, so what's not, why, why is nothing happening? What not, why, don't, don't, don't ask questions you don't already know the answer to. Happening. Right. Uh, and, and so we've seen. Yes, my name is Halgus. Halgus McGregor. Seeing this gradual admission over the past. Halgus McGregor Dingbat the third. Year that. It's real and it's not Russian, but they're not covering. The- 
Well, it's, you seemed like in a bit of a hurry for a while, but then you slowed down. And with that, oh, tell us the story again about that. That FBI agent you're doing the nasty with in your head. Tell us, did you have Roman hands and Russian fingers, you dirty poo playing bastard? This now, they're not covering the collusion that, that I think... No way! They didn't! ...is the bigger story. Thank you so, uh, so much for standing up for the truth. And by getting this story out there, more people... Yeah, so great you got the story out there because... It, it, the facts getting out there is much more complicated, takes work, and you can get sued. People will understand exactly what happened in 19 and 20 and what may happen now that the House is going to the Republicans. John Paul Yeah, no, no. As a matter of fact, this fucker and Rudy Giuliani basically fucked the pooch. There's no fucking way that it's not going to happen. You can't, you can't take someone's hard drive and bounce it around for two fucking years and then try to use it as evidence later, you bastard. Paul Mac Isaac, get the book, it's called American Injustice. I'm not gonna do that. I, I, I hope he put, he's got a book on tape version of it. I'll, let me see it on Aldous Lamp. My battle to expose the truth. Thanks for coming back on, and I hope to talk to you in the, in the New York, okay? Yes, in the New York. <laughs> as opposed to, I'm old Yurik. He wants to speak to you in the New York. And don't get confused. I'm young Yurik of, of old, son of Yurik, McGregor Isaac Dingbat the third. You fuck. Absolutely. Thank you again. No, you're not back invited. Get the fuck out of here. And don't come back unless you have a haggis. Thank for the opportunity and have a great weekend and have a Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas to you too, John. Oh, like he actually meant it. Fuck you. Sick of this shit. Just a garbage. I'll try to do that. It's just nasty. It's fucking nasty. All of you. I can't play the bagpipes until someone croaks. It's just a, it's a law. <coughs> All right. I'm fine. I've got a bit of a tickle in my throat. I swallowed a bagpipe six years ago and it's it got lodged there. Hi, you're watching House Parks Make It Worldwide. <coughs> can't, can't do the bagpipe tapping on my throat when I've got a cough. It's just not, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm limited in my, in my comedic ability right now. Please understand. Uh, but, uh, to, uh, Joe Pags, Pagliarillo and, uh, John Paul McIsaac. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Yeah. Some of the dumbest argument we've heard yet. And the, the, the only good part about the whole thing was that story about the FBI agent? Oh, 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 oh just ah, oh, just like you want to get her bags and give them a squeeze. You know what I'm saying? It's too important. Oh, oh, did she blow on your pipe, son? On your Yulian flute? So, um, 